66. Using the bond energies in table 7.2, determine the approximate enthalpy change for each of the following reactions, and then we have this one right here. So we have Cl2 gas plus 3F2 gas, which will yield two ClF3 gases. And for this question, we just have to determine the approx approximate, not exact, enthalpy change. Now, enthalpy change, any change in chemistry, physics, pre-calc, calculus, it always is that delta sign. So we're looking for the change, delta, enthalpy is capital H. I always remember this because when I was learning this, I always used to have trouble between enthalpy and entropy. Too many N words, right? E-N. So the one that had the H in it, like enthalpy, is the capital H and one more H. This is always talking about the heat. So there's the last H. This is the heat energy. So whether um, you're going to release heat uh, in a form of energy or you're going to absorb, let's find it out. Now, they don't want us to go into the back of the textbook to find out the delta H values for these compounds. What they want us to do instead is use the bond energies. Now, a bond energy is just the energy stored in a specific bond, whether it's a single, double, or a triple bond. But I'm looking here and I see... Do we see any bonds? I don't see any bonds, right? I don't see a single bond, double bond, triple bond. So when you're doing these types of problems, I highly recommend you to just pause and just draw out the Lewis structures. Even though it's one more step, it's the easiest way to figure out what types of bonds are you looking for. So you could pause the video and see if your Lewis structures match mine. Try to do the Lewis structures for all three of these. Now, if you're having a little bit of trouble with Lewis structures, we have tons of videos on the channel just teaching you how to draw the Lewis structures. And in those videos, I go step by step to show you how to draw them. This one will kind of be a quick inversion because we do have those uh, videos on the channel already. So let's see. So for Cl2, I have two chlorines, so Cl and Cl. And because of their valence electrons, it's a single bond with the six electrons around each chlorine. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And as far as Lewis structures goes, no one cares that it's a gas. If it was a gas, solid, liquid, nobody cares. All we care about are the bonds. So I'm not even going to say that this is a gas. I'm just gonna keep going. So this plus, I have F2s. So one fluorine, another fluorine, halogen again. So it's a single bond with the six electrons around the outside to make the octet. And then this will yield ClF3. Fluorine is the most electronegative element, which means that it's not going to be in the middle. So that means that chlorine is going to be in the middle, surrounded by the three fluorines. So maybe I'll say an F, an F, and an F. It does not matter um, where you put your Fs, if you want it to go this way, that's fine with me. Um, for this one, we have single bonds, all single bonds. And I just realized this side should be in blue, just to show the difference between reactants and products. So I have one chlorine, the three fluorines, one, two, three. They should all have single bonds. Those fluorines should have six lone electrons or three pairs. And then I believe the chlorine should have two pairs. So that would be it. I'm just gonna bring this in a little bit. And I mean, it looks, it looks pretty good to me. There we go. So now let's go to the bond energies and find out what are the bond energies that are going to be broken and formed. And before I do that, I just want to bring this in a little bit. It's kind of, there we go. Okay, that's much better. So we say to ourselves, okay, is CLCL, do I see this bond on the product side? No. So this is going to be broken. In order to get this, you have to break some bonds in order for bonds to be formed. So I went on the bond energy chart and found out that a CLCL single bond is worth 243 uh, kilojoules per mole. So I'm just going to put that there. And maybe I'll put that in red. 
So 243. Does anybody hear my stomach growling? It's almost breakfast time. AKA it's it's 257 PM. <laughs> FF. We have um F single bond F, which is exactly what we have. So I'm just gonna write down 160. Now for this one, I see that I have how many CLF bonds? I have one here. I have another CLF bond. That's two of them. And then I have another CLF bond. That's three of them. Each CLF bond is worth 255 um, kilojoules per mole. But since I have three of them, I'm going to take the 255 and times it by three to get the total of the CLF bonds. I'm gonna say three times, 255. So just right now, for the one molecule of CLF3, I have a total of 765 kilojoules per mole. All right, now, are we ready? We say, what are we going to do with these numbers, right? There's gotta be some formula. Well, the formula is this. And maybe I'll just put this, I think I got enough room. This looks good to me. So your delta H of the reaction, RxN stands for reaction. Notice how there's no little notch up here because we're not taking it from the state functions. We're doing the approximate one and the approximate enthalpy is from the bond angles. So that equals the sum. This symbol means the sum and the sum always means to just add it up, right? So we're gonna add up all the bond energies, the BEs of your bonds that are broken and the bonds that are broken are always going to be your reactant side. So these are going to break in this example and then we're gonna minus it from the sum of all those bond energies that are in the bonds that are formed. And that's these guys. So this is the product side. So now, before we even do that, we have to sum up the reactant and the product side. But now we have to take notice as to how many of these we had in our balanced equation. I had one Cl2 and three F2s and two ClF3s. So I have one of these, I have three of these, and I have two of these. So for each value that you have of the one compound, you technically need to multiply it by the coefficient. So technically you would multiply this by one, but anything times by one is the same. You would need to multiply that 160 by three of them because three of these bonds technically have broke. And then for this one, whee, I'm going to take that number and times it by two. Maybe what I'll do is I'll just bring this over on in there and put a two there. Now we have to sum them up. It's literally Cl2 plus the F2. So this plus this. There's only one compound here, so I don't have to add anything, but I still have to times it by two. So let's do the reactant side. 243 plus three times 160. So I get a total of 723 for my reactant side. And then for my product side, I have two times 765. And I'm just making sure that everything looks good here. The numbers look good. So this equals 1,530 kilojoules per mole. Now I'm ready to plug in my equation. Delta H for the whole entire reaction equals the sum of all of those broken, which was 723 kilojoules. And now I'm gonna subtract it with all the sum of the product side, 1,530. And right there, we can get our answer. The approximate enthalpy change for the whole entire reaction is 723 minus this number. And woo, it's exothermic, because it's a negative, which means that the heat energy is being released. It's gonna get hot. So negative 807 kilojoules per mole, and that, is your final answer. Okay, 
There we go. What'd you think? Let's just color, color, color. All good. All right. So I hope this helped. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Um, if you wouldn't mind, please tell your classmates, your friends about this channel. It just gets the word out there that this YouTube channel exists. Free education for all. I think it's pretty cool. <laughs> what do you think? Um, I hope you're having a great day out there. Keep studying hard and I'm going to get something to eat. My stomach really is decomposing. <laughs> um, okay. So I, I hope you have a great day and I'll talk to you soon. All right. In the next lesson. Bye-bye.